what uh, one needs to understand is uh, all human experience is generated from within. Right now, to put it uh, in a very basic way, do you see me at least? Do you? Where am I? Show it to me. Use your hands and show me where am I. Ah, you got it all wrong. You know, I'm a mystic from South India, so you, you're getting it all wrong. <laughs> in the sense, see this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in the retina, you know the whole story. Where do you see me right now? Within yourself. Where do you hear me right now? Within yourself. Where have you seen the whole world? Within yourself. Everything that's ever happened to you, light and darkness has happened only within you. Pain and pleasure has happened only within you. Agony and ecstasy has happened only within you. You have never experienced anything outside of yourself. If the person next to you right now touches you, you think you are experiencing his hand. No, you are only experiencing the sensations in your hand. You are incapable of experiencing the other hand. Yes or no? Yes, you understand? So all experience is generated from within. When all experience is generated from within, at least what happens within you, what happens in the world is not hundred percent ever in your control, it'll never be. But at least what happens within you has to be in your control. Why it is not in control is, there are many aspects but to put it on the surface, one thing that's happening is mind is in a compulsive mode. Because of a certain information that it has gathered, Information means a bank of memory and your hands are always in this bank of memory. Memory means it's of the past. You're always trying to use your mind to use this memory to project into the future. With memory you cannot go into the future, you can only enlarge the past. Most human beings are using their mind and their intellect essentially based on the data that, you, that they already have, which is a limited possibility. There are two ways of using the mind. One is if you want to look smart in front of people, gather a lot of information and throw it out. It makes you smart in a society, but not existentially. Another way of using your mind is keeping all the information down and just using your mind as a device to pay attention, to simply pay attention without any prejudice, without any preconceived ideas, simply paying attention. If human consciousness pays enough attention to something, there is nothing in the universe which will not open its doors. There is nothing at all. But if you do not pay enough attention, nothing ever opens to you. You can only live in the past. Now stress or tension or whatever, essentially it is unpleasantness, yes? Different names, unhappiness, misery, agony, whatever, these are all just different names for unpleasantness. Once your experience of life is unpleasant for whatever reason, unpleasantness means it causes suffering within you. Once there is fear of suffering, your life will only be half a step, never a full stride. As long as a human being carries the fear of suffering within himself, he will never walk full stride, he will only walk half steps. What will happen to me is always the problem. Unless you bring yourself to your state, whatever happens, this is how I will be. If this assurance is there within you, then you would explore just about anything, isn't it? Because the success or failure of your venture does not determine what you go into and what you do not go into. You are willing to walk into hell and out because if you have an assurance that no matter what happens, my experience of life will be pleasant if this assurance comes into you. This is something that one has to earn. This is not going to come because of external activity. Any activity or any success in your life happens because you did a few things right about that. Yes? Your enterprise is successful to a certain point because you've done that many things right probably. 
Unless you do the right things, right things will not happen to you, whether it's outside or inside. If here stress is happening, suffering is happening, tension is happening, obviously you're not doing the right things about this one. It's as simple as that. So one has to learn to do what is the right thing. If one has to know what is the right thing, a little attention to this instrument, to this being, how this one functions, what is the basis of who you are, how it functions from within. If this attention is paid, every human being can handle this much. We do not know whether you will conquer the world or not. That's subject to so many realities. But at least you can make the experience of your life pleasant. That is everybody's birthright and everybody is capable of that if only they pay little attention. This is what we are calling as inner engineering, that what happens within you, you engineer it the way you want it. If you make this one the way you want it, where is the question of stress, where is the question of suffering? Those things don't exist in your vocabulary or in your life. See, it's unfortunate that people who are successful are talking about pressure, not pleasure. This is a message that's going to the world, that successful people are sending out a message, success is suffering. This is a very wrong message because success is the sweetest thing in human life. Yes or no? Is it not important? The little things are big things. You want it to succeed or no, success is important. But right now, if you look at the most successful people on the planet, they carry the most stressful faces, most miserable faces. This is a wrong message to the next generation of people. If this happens continuously, which has happened in some societies, for example, in the sixties in America, this happened big time. They found conservative business people carried such straight-jacketed attitudes towards life, such long miserable faces, the youth decided smoking pot on the street side is much better than doing something big and being miserable in the end. <laughs> At least we are happy. I'm telling you, the youth is looking for life, not for success. Unless you translate success into life, unless you translate success as a great way to live, if this message does not go across, if any society stops seeking success, that society is definitely down the drain. So right now in this society, there is longing for success. Everybody is wanting to succeed. This is a time those of you who have succeeded reasonably to show a joyful face. This is a great responsibility that you have, that people should see success is not suffering, success is a great thing. So why is suffering happening? Now, uh, you are trying to bring a compromising word instead of stress, shall we call it pressure? <laughs> Why don't you call it the pleasure of doing business? When do you get pressured? You get pressured when you arrive at a situation that you do not know how to handle, isn't it? Yes or no? See, right now I am illiterate. If somebody asks me to write my name, I will get pressured because I don't know how to write my name. You don't get pressured with that, but you will get pressured with something else that you do not know how to do. If every day you are facing situations you do not know how to handle, that means for sure you're growing, you're not stagnant. If every day you're facing only those situations that you clearly know how, how to handle, probably you're stagnant and just there, not going anywhere because familiar situations are coming every day means you're not in new spaces. So when you say, I don't want these new situations, unconsciously you're saying, I don't want growth, I don't want challenges, I don't want new situations. Always I want to be in situations that I know, that I'm familiar with means you're deciding that you must be stagnant forever, isn't it? There is a certain comfort in it, but comfort can kill, you know. Yes, <laughs> comfort can kill. If you die of exhaustion, it's okay. But if you die of boredom, that's a horrible life. So, do not try to give it more names. Just understand this one thing. If your body took instructions from you, 
would you choose health or illness? Health for sure, isn't it? Any doubt? No, you're clear, health. If your mind took instructions from you, would you choose joy or tension? Hmm? Joy for sure. If your emotions took instructions from you, would you choose love, compassion, pleasantness or unpleasantness? Pleasantness. So, your choices are clear. You need to understand that somewhere either your body or your mind or your emotion is not taking instructions from you. Maybe you never figured, you never paid attention as to where the damn switches are. Where the keyboard is, you don't know, you're punching it like this and hope it works. By accident, you can just about achieve anything, but you can't stay there. You are trying to somehow, somehow be happy, somehow be peaceful, somehow succeed. No. If there is a method to be successful in your business, why is there no method? Why do you think there is no method? to be successful in your joy, in your happiness, in your love, in your peacefulness. Why is there no method? There is a method. If you have not explored the method, accidentally it's happened. It's not that you have not known happiness or joy or love in your life, you have known, but not sustainable, isn't it? You are one moment there, next moment crashing. Just about anybody can cause unpleasantness to you.